good afternoon. I want to continue this thought of waiting on God by today talking to you about a common theme I see in the life of leaders in both the Old and New Testament, and that is long and protracted times of waiting. Uh, I think about Moses in the Old Testament. You know, he flees Egypt as a young man. Now, at one point, God is going to use him as a great leader over the nation. But before he does that, he puts him for 40 years on the backside of a desert as a shepherd. But this is preparation time. This is to prepare his soul, to prepare his heart and his mind for shepherding the people of God out of Egypt and helping to constitute them as a people of God, as a nation. You look at Joseph. Joseph is sold into slavery at the age of 17. He doesn't come into his leadership until the age of 30. And scholars debate how much of this time, but, but it's anywhere from two to 12 or 14 years that Joseph spends in prison. And once again, he's, he's waiting, but it's, it's soul prep time. It's, it's time where God is preparing him for those years of leadership as Egypt's number two. You look at the Apostle Paul. God is calling him on the road to Damascus. He, he has this epiphany. He sees the resurrected Christ. But the Bible tells us before he goes to Jerusalem to consult with any of the leaders there, he spends three years in the Arabian desert to spend time with Jesus, to prepare for the years he'll have as an apostle to the Gentiles. Even Jesus. Jesus has three and a half years of spectacular ministry recorded for us in the gospel, out of which we only get a short glimpse into his birth and around the age of 12. But apart from that, what about the rest of those 30 years? What was God doing in Jesus to prepare him for this time of three and a half years of ministry? I promise you this, there was a lot of waiting that took place. Waiting is all about soul formation. You know, I recently, and I, and I don't entertain any idea of or thought of, of being some kind of great leader. I'm not. But I know what it's like to wait in leadership. I only recently emerged from a dark night experience myself. And uh, this dark night lasted for three years. You see, in my life, I've always known what comes next. I just did. I, I just never questioned. I just, I knew what was next, got working on what was next, was always moving forward. And for the past three years, God just kind of turned that off for me. In part because of what he was doing to complete the work that he started in me. He, he was purging my, my soul, purging my ego, uh, stripping away the sense of self that was overly invested in what I do, in how I do it, and being the lead pastor at Spring Creek Church. God was preparing me for whatever comes next. But what do you do when you spend not a couple weeks, not a few months, but years waiting for what's next? Here's what you do. You keep taking the next right step. You see, when God turned out the lights for me, I knew what direction he pointed me. So I just kept going in that direction, just taking it one day at a time, taking the next right step that he made clear. And for some of you, that's the mode you need to shift into. Because if not, the temptation is to make things happen. The temptation is to escape a dark night, is to escape this time in the desert. It's to escape this time of soul prep so that we can go back to feeling the way we used to feel. And God is trying to usher you into a whole new level of faith and, and, and understanding and obedience. And that soul work is done one day at a time, one step at a time, doing the next right thing in front of you. And you'd be amazed how long you can do that and how much that builds your faith and confidence in a God who will never let you go. God bless you. See you again real soon.